Wolf's Law. What is Wolf's Law and how does it relate to the martial arts and body conditioning? Well, Wolf, Dr. Dr. Julius Wolf, a 19th century German surgeon who, sort of, sort of technical terms aside, he basically said that bones get thicker and stronger to withstand stresses that are put upon them. Uh, obvious example is, say, um, rugby players, for example, or judo practitioners or jiu-jitsu, you know, any grappling sport where people fall or collide, bang, they will have, the people who do that a lot, but they will have thicker, particularly thicker, longer bones, say in the arms and the legs, because uh, their limbs and well, most of their body, but just particularly like, so the, the, the long bones, as it were, in the limbs will get thicker because they're constantly being put under stress, like colliding and banging and stuff. It's very obvious as well in um, some more striking arts, say karate, uh, karate car who do, I was going to say the makiwara, the, the striking post, the old thing used to have the straw wrapped around it and stuff. I mean, you get it in Taekwondo and stuff as well, whatever they call it. But you could just say um, if people do knuckle push-ups a lot, the bone, I mean, these calluses aside, but the knuckles themselves getting thicker and more prominent, bigger. Uh, that's an obvious example of Wolf's Law. That's just bone density increasing. It can be sometimes very, very obvious. I remember 20 years ago when I, used to live in, when I was living in England and the teacher of the karate club I went to, uh, Sensei Eric, proper old school sort of chockish and no-nonsense, great stuff, um, basically but effective and all that. And he had, at the base of his wrist here, he had this thing, let's put the camera down there. Oh dear, this is not working, is it? So at the base of his wrist, he had this thing coming out like that. It was like, it's like a, it looked like a sort of short ice cream cone <laughs> covered in skin, but it was bone, you know, and I think it was something as extreme, it was like a, like a, a benign tumour. Uh, it just, he, he'd hit it that many times, the bone had gone a bit mad and just, all the body gone like man sent loads of hot calcium to to um you know to that area and he, he just loved it because it was so great for breaking i mean that was an example of almost one might say you know extreme conditioning um i don't know if benign tumor was actually i never actually asked him but tumor you got oh my god but you know there's benign where it's just not it's not cancerous at all it's just a particular part of mass i'll, I'll be careful because i don't really know what i'm talking about but yeah, a part of the body just getting bigger um, to really deal with a, to a strain or stress that's put upon it. And I've seen it a couple of times here in Japan since the same thing, that sort of s the spike at the base of the wrist. And I think it's where the small bone is that's often used for breaking. Uh, in Japanese, I believe it's called stoll. Uh, I can never pronounce it in English. I forget it. It's a technical term. It's that small, small bone at the base of the wrist. Um it just goes mad, you know, and produces loads of calcium, or whatever, and becomes really prominent. And something like you, if you do conditioning for a while, the old wolf's law, you can you can feel it. Something like on on this forearm. Uh, actually, this one particular, I think I've got a small. It's called a parry fracture. Um, I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. I, I went to the doctor about it. He just the proper dub bone doctor in Japan, because you see the doctor you want to see straight away. You don't have to get referred. It's really great. Um, but the parry fracture so-called because it's the old thing the, the old battlefield one someone going to hit you for a stick or something you put your arm up and that would break your, the two bones or one of the two bones on your arm um, but I think I got it when I was doing conditioning I went a bit mad one time and I've still got this lump here where I think it's, it's I, mean, I didn't break it but it was very very bruised and everything um, and where it's healed up I've, I've got this lump here and certain this arm as well, it's very bumpy going along. I think that's when certain points the, the bone's grown thicker than in other areas. So that's an obvious example of Wolf's Law. And if you say that, like, if you're if you're a hypochondriac like me, then um, <laughs> can be a bit alarming till you get used to it. But certainly, I mean, I in, I believe I'm. I believe it's in in my humble opinion, it's. Something should be done 20 minutes a day from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. As I, I'll, I'm trying to avoid saying this in every video I do, but the Bruce Lee thing, train every part of your body, which I paraphrase to condition every part of your body. 
And I just think, I'm speaking of Bruce Lee, there was uh, James Lee, one of the three, along with Fit Man and someone else, who were cert- who recognised as teachers of Bruce Lee. He was no relation, James Lee. But he was American, um, and he was a welder, and he just constructed, because he was an iron palm expert, so he constructed a sort of... Um, a training whatever thing for himself out of metal so he just strike metal to just condition his body um, the great John Blooming the uh, Dutch um, karate, well, karate judo car whatever one of the sort of first guys in Japan or the Far East after the war along with Don Drager etc um, but he said he saw uh, what got him into heavy conditioning work I mean he's a big guy anyway but he saw he saw this guy, Japanese guy, break 15 tiles with knife hand. Um, what he didn't realise was this this thing they had of, uh, like, the tiles were half cut underneath. They were half sawn through. Um, so John Blooming didn't know this, and he, he tried to break 15 himself, and, you know, his, his thick Dutch, Dutch accent was like, damn near broke my wrist. Um, it sounded like Sean Connery a bit, that, didn't it? Uh, so he... Not knowing this till later, he actually got very, very conditioned so he could do it. I mean, it was the old thing like, um, you know, if you missed and you, and you hadn't conditioned properly, so if you did a break with your knife hand and you missed, particularly that sort of ice break, the big blocks of ice, and you hit your um, forearm, that would just snap it. So people get conditioned for that on the just in case. Uh, there's a video on YouTube, I think, of an Indian guy, an Indian, I think it's karate, he, he, he goes to do an ice break, I think it is, I've seen it, and he misses and he is. Oh, his arm just goes like that, goes like that. So, I mean, it can happen. Um, but that's just, that's Wolf's Law, yeah. It's, it's bones from, you know, your skull to your, your toes. If you if you strike them carefully, slowly and steadily, I mean, there will be the school of thought, usually the people that believe you can fire energy bolts out of your hands and all that, you know, no, no touch knockouts and all that. CRAP, people say, oh, don't do that, I'll give you arthritis and stuff. I mean, like anything, it's possible to do something too much and muck yourself up, or you can do things slowly and steadily. As far as I can, I mean, John John Blooming, he, he passed away in 2018, but he made old bones. You know, as far as I'm aware, he never he had injuries and stuff. But I don't want to go too far into this, but you you will get whatever you do. Physically, like runners get bad knees and stuff. There's always the risk that you're going to get something resulting from training unfortunately we age our bodies break down we can do as much as we can to keep going for as long as we can um, but ultimately you know we're, we're going to get old and die <laughs> so i mean there is you know there are risks to anything but you know if you do things slowly, anyway the take-home message if you do things slowly and steadily will slow the bone will thicken uh get harder get stronger and hopefully make you better suited to um whatever it is you're doing in, in, in the world of the martial arts in this case. So that was, uh, that's Wolf's Law there. Us.